USA! USA! We can't pay! We can't pay! All right, folks, here is the deal. The car market, it is resetting. We have record auto loan delinquency rates, record auto repossession rates. We've got quarterly earnings that suck from all the automakers and dealers have more inventory than they know what to do with. And all the while, Dad, the average new car auto loan interest rate, nearly 10%, the average used car auto loan interest rate, over 14.5%. The car market is resetting. Let's start with those delinquencies and repossessions. Credit Acceptance Corporation, their earnings just came out recently, and they have continued to increase their credit loss provisions. That means the amount of money they set aside for loans that are not going to come due. Dad, people have stopped paying for their auto loans, and repos keep going up. Both consumer repos and dealer repos. What is going on? Well, uh, everybody including the entire country, is overextended, okay? Everybody is tapping into their credit lines to live the life that they've lived for the last, I don't know, several decades. And and people have stepped up their usage of credit to the point where they can no longer afford to make those monthly payments and stay on track for paying off those loans. It is, um, I don't know, a recipe for financial disaster for a vast number of Americans out there at the moment. And what happened was during the pandemic, there was the government stimulus money and there were auto uh, auto loan interest rates that were close to 0% for a lot of people. People just signed up for 84 month car notes with money that wasn't necessarily things that, you know, money that they earned. And now they're in a situation where as cars have started to depreciate again, there's in a, a tremendous negative equity situation. I forgot to mention that. That Edmonds came out with the latest data. Over $6,000 in negative equity is the amount on average that someone brings to the table. So it's like the market went like this. Now the market's coming back down like this. And the direct result of that is a lot of people who are upside down in their car loans, a lot of people who can't get approved to buy a new vehicle, a lot of people who would want to purchase a vehicle, but the prices are too high. And then ultimately that glut of inventory. Again, kind of like a recipe for reset is how I think about it. Uh, well, we very well could see a reset. And, and as we know, uh, when we're recording this, the Fed recently said they're not going to lower rates yet, which means this is going to continue for, I don't know, a couple more months or so before we can get some consumer relief in, in the rates that they're paying. I mean, credit card interest rates have gone up nearly 7% in the last two and a half to three years. So if you had a credit card balance in the past, you were paying somewhere around 14% to carry that, that credit card balance. Today, it's around 21%. That's a huge spike. That takes, that means if you're making the minimum payment, if you live to 300, you'd still never pay off your credit card. <laughs> because you're accruing more interest every month than you're paying down. And more and more people are finding themselves in that position. They have, they have made bad financial decisions, and the banks have encouraged them to do that. And now the piper's got to be paid, and, and the banks are struggling getting the people to pay. The people are struggling to figure out how they're going to pay. And it could get really, really ugly. We're finally starting to see this actually impact the automakers as well. So for months, we've been talking about how dealers are overflowing with inventory and feeling the pain. Dealers are also not doing particularly well right now because they finance their inventory in most cases. That's called floor plan. Google search car edge space floor plan. We've got guides on it or here on YouTube. We've even seen repossessed vehicles from dealers go up. But, Dad, the automakers are finally starting to show the signs that the market is weakening because the automakers have dealers for a reason. They're essentially their offshoot. When they overproduce vehicles that aren't selling, they can just hand them off to the dealers and they're sold units from the automaker's perspective. But if you look at the most recent quarterly earnings for Volkswagen, General Motors, Stellantis, and Ford, they are all bad. Really, really not good. We saw stock prices plummet as a result of how poor their results were, because even that offshoot of fleet sales to fleet customers and their dealer bodies, it's starting to backfire a little bit. There's so much inventory that they can't sell it all to their dealers. Their dealers are refusing, their fleet customers are refusing, and now it's finally starting to show up at the automaker level. I didn't even mention Nissan, Dad. Nissan wiped out 99% of their global profit because of how much money they had to spend on marketing and advertising and incentives to sell their vehicles. 
I don't know how else to say it, man. Reset. That is what's happening right now. R-E-S-E-T. Reset. I, I believe you could be on to something. You know, just looking at some of the data, new car inventories are up 50% July over July. Okay, they're nearly at 3 million vehicles available for sale this past July, as opposed to the 2 million that were available a year earlier. So as these inventories continue to build, and it's only for some brands, not all brands, it's not across the board, but for the brands that whose inventory continue to build, they will have to reset their pricing structure, either lowering MSRPs, increasing the size of the discounts to get people to buy the cars, or increasing their marketing spend. So yes, we could see some type of reset moving forward to make vehicles, I don't know, a tad bit more affordable for people. I would go so far as to say, Dad, that we're seeing the reset right now already. Nissan, again, 99% of their profit gone because they had to increase incentives so much. You've got to imagine that that is indicative of what's happening right now, right? Like they've watched and seen, okay, our cars are not selling to, to retail customers. What do we? What do you do? What do you do when cars don't sell? You were in the industry for 40 plus years. What do you do? You lower the prices. Or as you always say, if there's 0% financing on a car, it's because there's zero interest in it. We've seen 0% financing on the Dodge Hornet, for example, up to 84 months. The average new car interest rate right now is almost 10%. Think about the amount of savings or the expense that in that case Dodge is taking on to finance that vehicle just because there's zero interest in it. So I think the writing is already on the wall and we're seeing that activity and that action from the automaker and from the dealers who are willing to negotiate more. But I think we're going to see even more of it. Like Q4, the end of 2024 is going to be one of the best times I think to have ever bought a new car oversupply of inventory. Hopefully by then interest rates are coming down a little bit, but more importantly, there's just pressure on the dealers and pressure on the automakers to sell these things that aren't, aren't selling. And so back to that, back to the beginning of the video, everyone in the United States is broke. We can't pay for things. I'm pretty sure that leads to one outcome, man, and that's lower car prices and, and more negotiability. That's what I see happening in the near future. USA, USA, we can pay. Car Edge Concierge, the revolutionary way to buy your next car. You tell us what you want and our team of experienced concierges goes to work on your behalf. They source the vehicle, negotiate the price, and make arrangements to have it delivered to you directly. Never set foot in a car dealership again. CarEdge.com slash concierge to learn more about how you have the power to save both your time and money. Let the car buying revolution begin at Car Edge. CarEdge.com, all sorts of free resources back there, Dad. Like what? Oh, I don't know. What's your car going to depreciate over time? How much is your insurance going to be? What should you expect to pay for fuel? It's all there. All that information in one place. 